Undertale by Toby Fox, a game that everyone has been going crazy all over since its release. But not me, and if it wasn't for the fact that I played the game myself, I would have said the fan hype kept me away from playing this pretty sweet RPG. Yes, there are times where the crowd is hyped about something and I'm actually in on it, which is Undertale. Now, there is a lot to like about the game, but I want to backpedal to my past with RPG games. The few RPGs that I only ever liked is Super Mario RPG because it's one of my favorite, and if not, greatest games on my top video game list of all time. Because it's fun and involving, unlike other RPGs like the Final Fantastical series or Chrono Trigger. Yeah, I went there, and you can suck it for all it's worth, mainly for the overpraise. But long story short, Super Mario RPG corrupted my taste for RPGs because of how well designed it is, how fun it is, and showing how Square can actually make an RPG I would like, if not love. So for a long time, I never found another RPG game that is as involving as Mario RPG. Oh sure, there were a few, like Mario and Luigi games of course, Super Robot Wars Endless Frontier, the original Fallout games, etc. Hey Wizward, when are you gonna talk about Undertale? Well, if you'll let me finish while you sit on your ass and listen, I'm getting to it. Undertale by Toby Fox is now one of the few RPGs that has been added to my great RPGs list of all time, because it's just that involving and fun and I enjoy it a lot. Even if there are a few things that could be better if you don't have the game shoved so far up your ass that you can't see the improvements it could have had. So what did I like about the game so much that it's one of the few games to make it on my list? Is it the story, Wiz War? Well, the story, not really. Now, don't get me wrong, I liked it, but the initial opening and theme to the story is not what I liked about the game as a whole. Granted, it does play an important role, and that role is that the story is the freshest thing since Fresh Toast Mentos that I've experienced in a while. The way it's told, the journey through it, meeting all the wacky characters that I end up getting a bit attached to, and the quirky events you'll experience and not see coming if you didn't spoil the game for yourself. Seriously, I almost needed to get a weather forecast for all the quirky events that were about to happen because it's as unpredictable as winning the lottery numbers. I would talk about it some more, but I really don't want to spoil it because there are a lot of moments where I went, what the fudge? Because I literally just did not see or expect certain things to happen, and it just kept my interest going to see what's going to happen next. But I'll give you a brief opening. Humans and monsters once existed, they fought a war, the world flip turned upside down, the monsters lost and are now trapped in a cave. Yawn. But sometime later in the future, you, a young child, decided to go inside a cave alone, and now you've fallen into a hole and have to get out as you meet several characters and monsters to try to get you killed because you're human. Yawn. The opening comes off generic, but believe me, the things that happen during your adventure and how it's told is worth going through because it's just so different for once that I do urge you to get this game just to experience it. Not only that, there's two stories that get told depending on how you play the game. You can play as either the nice pacifist child or the killer child, which makes me feel like shit killing all the characters I've grown attached to. But you should do it anyways, because it's a whole new world after playing either side. Also, a bit of advice, don't do the genocide route first or your pacifist run will be tainted and you'll find out why when you do so, or if you looked it up. But anyways, the story is not why I wanted to play Undertale. Oh, not the story, hmm? Then perhaps the gray fix? I don't know why you would say gray fix unless you mean during the battle phase where the game goes black and white, but for the majority of the game it looks and reminds me of Earthbound on the Super Nintendo, which might attract some of you to this game. And you know what? It's nice to see graphics like that once in a while when you compare it to all the overly detailed pixel sprites you find in other 2D games. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I gotta say, the graphics definitely help the game in shaping the world you're thrown into. It's simple, charming, effective, and gives the game a unique, fresh identity. The worlds have a theme, even if it's generic, like Snow World and Fire World, but the characters you meet all have unique looks that make them special. But no, the graphics isn't the main reason I liked Undertale. Jeez, Wizwar, it sounds like you're just really hard to please. I wouldn't go there. Being easily impressed is what people without quality control do. Kind of like how some prostitutes allow anything in their butthole, which I refuse to be. I also refuse to be the cynical Nazi brochure critic who never seems to be pleased with any aspect of any games. So just remember this, I want to be fair in my judgement and review of video games, while still having my own personal opinion and bias to them. Sound good? Speaking of sound... The music is the main reason I threw everything away to actually sit down to play the game just so I can listen to it. That feat alone in getting me to play a game is impressive. You developers of Undertale deserve a pat on the back, because the music is just that great. For the most part. Yeah, everyone jerked off on that too, but it's so good that I don't think you can taint it. Of course, you do have to consider personal taste and such, and the music is certainly the kind of tracks I like to listen to. 
from very retro music, Toho-like tracks, soothing ambience, atmospheric noise, and epic boss music. There's an emotion and mood to each track, and it's just really well done, even if some of the tracks I find are kind of lame. But the ratio between the good and not so good is so far and wide that any music I didn't find that good is just nitpicking and that the overall music is still really good. Worthy of all the overpraising and getting a copy of, which I do have loaded on my phone to listen to. Oh, so the music is the piece that makes it on your top video game list, Wizwar? Top RPG list? Because if we're talking about video game lists, my list is still pretty big. And no, you wigglers, the music is not the sole reason Undertale is on my list. Just a part of it, because no matter how good your game looks, or how good it sounds, or how it's told, the ultimate point of a video game is the gameplay and the involvement, because otherwise you're just talking about a movie. And I have to say, the gameplay makes the price you pay for Undertale is worth it and beyond, for I have not had this much involvement in the game's combat since Super Mario RPG. Where to start? Well, how about the combat? Now, the selling point of this game is that you never actually have to kill anyone, which reminds me of the Shin Megami Tensei games except with the option to be completely pacifist, which, as far as RPGs go, is definitely a fresh idea that, in my opinion, is explored quite well in this game. It's not just a simple matter of telling your enemies, I don't want to fight you, it's a bit of a mixture of puzzles and patience, and you find the right things to do to trigger them into not wanting to fight you anymore. Like, for example, if you ever encounter a dog-type enemy you have trouble subduing, for some reason, throw a stick at it and the battle ends, which I still suggest you deal with them normally to see and appreciate the difference in tactics. It's small touches like this that make me like the design of the game that I wish it did it some more. On a quick mention of small touches, there are a lot of small mechanics working behind this game, and it's very intricate, ranging from small dialogue changes to using that stick I mentioned as an alternative way to go about ending the battle quicker. Also, unlike in other RPGs like, say, Final Fantasticals or Grono Jigglers, yep, still going there, whenever you get attacked, you can't do shit against it except hope that your stupid characters do the smart thing to protect themselves, which they will most likely not do because the game design sucks, but like I said, people are blind to that. But in Undertale, you can dodge the attacks to avoid damage in either a bullet hell pattern or a platformer pattern, and if that's not cool enough, each major character has a unique WTF attack pattern or gimmick for you to avoid that's different from the previous one, keeping the game fresh, involving, and challenging. As for the combat, if you ever decide to go for the genocide run because you're either curious or sick, you have a little simple quick time event where if you press your attack at the right time, you do more damage. Kind of like in Super Mario RPG, so instantly involving and I enjoy that design choice, even if it's really simple. Also, there isn't an abundance of random encounters to disrupt the gameplay, the pacing of the game, and also no grinding, which I think we can all appreciate. At first there is, but as the game goes on, it starts doing the Mario RPG thing where you do get to see the monsters you're about to fight. And more games should do that instead of the random encounter bullshit like in the Final Fantastical games, which I always despised. In addition to combat that can be avoided, you have puzzles that you have to solve to proceed. There is a good abundance of them, and they're relatively simple, but fun to solve, and some small action sequences here and there during the quirky moments. That's all I can say from the gameplay aspect of it, but overall, it's very engaging and I absolutely love the game for it. So let's all give a big hand to Toby Fox and the other developers involved in Undertale. That's not to say there aren't things I'm not too fond of, which I'll get into. Who knows, what could you possibly improve in Undertale? It's perfect! No it isn't, you ignorant sluts. For one thing, give us a run button. Backtracking is what I did a lot in this game to see if anything changed after a certain point or if I missed something, and over and over again I wish there was a run button to speed things up. Yes, there are warps, but that just isn't enough. It's not necessary that they have a run button, but it would be very nice if it did, so please, if the developers of this game ever watch this video, please update the game with a run button like in Super Mario RPG. That was just such a good game. Also, the whole deal with certain endings. I honestly almost don't see why we're even given a choice. If I'm gonna go for the pacifist run, then why would I ever, in the entire game, attack and kill a monster? Because if I did that, then the pacifist run is done! Vice versa, for the genocide route, why would I ever spare any monsters if the goal is to kill everyone? Yeah, 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 there's the neutral route, which might as well be pacifist run negative because it's similar, but you just skip out on a few things and go proceed through the game as normal. I mean, really? This is exactly like the triple-ass game moral choice system that doesn't reward you for wavering in the middle if you don't stick to one side. Like, are you really going to replay the game slightly different just for some tiny dialogue change? Yeah, it's interesting, but ugh, so D minor. 
Then there's the music tracks I mentioned, but as I also said, minor nitpicks. Also, the game is frat thanks to a certain scene that occurred, so I honestly cannot call this game a 10 out of 10, as Steam claims it to be. But despite some of the nitpicks and Fatty McFatFat words used, Undertale is a game worth buying and playing for the price given, and I pretty much highly recommend it because you'll never experience something this fresh and quirky for a while, until the sequel or prequel comes out with the many wannabe copies of it. I'm Wizworld 100, you're the viewers, and I'm the reviewer, so stay tuned for more from Wizworld 100. See ya!